Governor Mike Beebe of Arkansas made headlines when he announced plans to pardon his son, who'd been convicted of felony marijuana possession years earlier. Some agreed with the governor, while others criticized him. But what stuck out to me was his comment to a Little Rock television station. Beebe said, I would have done it a long time ago if he'd have asked. But he took his sweet time about asking. I imagine the father of the prodigal son would have said the same thing in Luke 15. If asked why he put the robe, ring, and shoes on his son, and had the fattened calf killed for a celebration dinner, he would have probably said, I would have done it a long time ago if he'd have returned. But he took his sweet time about returning. It must have been incredibly painful for the father to hear his son ask for his part of the inheritance, to see him pack his bags and leave, to know that he was far away in a foreign country. There must have been many sleepless nights tossing and turning as he thought about his boy. Though the father did not restrain his son or chase after him as he left, it broke his heart to see him go. And then it happened. When the father saw his son coming, he ran to meet him with open arms. He embraced him and kissed him. He then called for three items that were of great significance in the household. A robe, a ring, and shoes. Servants didn't wear these things. Sons did. They were privileged possessions for privileged people. He also ordered the fattened calf to be killed for a celebration dinner. It was party time. Now, the prodigal son didn't deserve a party. A lashing, maybe. A lecture, certainly. But not a party. He knew that, as did the older brother. His reckless behavior was simply inexcusable. After all, how dare he demand his part of the inheritance while the father still lived? How dare he go off and blow the money on loose living in a foreign country? How dare he come back now with nothing to show for himself? He deserved banishment, not a banquet. He should be sentenced, not celebrated. But that's the point. God is willing to extend grace to even the worst sinners when they seek it. It's not based on their merit, but on His mercy. The father could have put his son on some sort of probation. That alone would have been more than he deserved and a remarkable demonstration of grace but probation never crossed his mind. He immediately issued a full pardon. While the first two parables of Luke 15 emphasize God's part in the salvation process, actively seeking the lost, the last parable emphasizes man's part of the process. The son had to humble himself and come home. He had to repent and seek reconciliation. If he had not done that, he would have never benefited from his Father's grace. And so it is with us. God will do His part, but we must do our part. Have you?